So good morning to everybody and thank you for offering me the opportunity to present these two studies related to the approaches uh, of gene addition therapy and uh, thalassemia. And in particular, uh, I will discuss with you the results uh, that have been obtained in patients followed up to eight years after the gene addition therapy procedure, uh, as well as also the quality of life uh, uh, results uh, that have been obtained. Thalassemia is uh, an hereditary disorder in which there is uh, either a reduced or even absent production of the gamma chain, of the beta chain of hemoglobin, this resulting uh, into a relative excess of uh, the alpha chain uh, that leads uh, to both ineffective erythropoiesis and a short uh, uh, life duration for the erythrocytes. Patients with transfusion-dependent thalassemia need uh, to be regularly transfused, uh, I would say around three weeks, uh, for uh, a staying in life, uh, and uh, they also need uh, to receive uh, iron collision therapy to prevent uh, the occurrence of uh, organ damage related uh, to the iron accumulation, uh, which is mainly due to the transfusion, but also to an increase uh, intestine absorption uh, of uh, iron. And despite uh, the optimization uh, of uh, the transfusional regimen uh, and the availability of uh, oral iron chelating drugs, uh, these patients on the long term uh, are exposed to the risk of developing uh, complications including uh, liver fibrosis or cirrhosis, uh, uh, cardiac heart fa uh, arrhythmia or heart failure, diabetes, and other endocrinopathies. So there is a desperate need uh, for potentially curative treatment uh, that uh, till a few years ago was only represented by analogenized stem cell transplantation with the limitation that uh, only a minority of patients have an actually identical sibling uh, and the risk of uh, transplant-related complications uh, is particularly high in patients above the age uh, of 14. What is the gene addition therapy we are talking about? Uh, uh, I uh, like to briefly summarize, uh, thanks to this cartoon, uh, uh, the uh, type uh, of approach uh, that has been developed, uh, in particular, beta cell is an ex vivo gene addition therapy for these patients, enabling the production of uh, adult hemoglobin at levels that uh, may eliminate the need uh, for regular uh, erythrocyte transfusion. The patient journey is characterized by the initial mobilization of the hematopoietic stem cells into peripheral blood uh, thanks to the combined action of uh, GCSF and another agent called plerixafor. The cells are collected, selected, and then genetically modified with uh, a self-inactivating third-generation lentiviral vector. Once that, uh, the drug product has been released, uh, the patient is prepared uh, with the busulfan base uh, mild ablation, and then the cryopreserved, genetically corrected uh, hematopoietic cells uh, are infused. Remarkably, as you can see in this cartoon, uh, and the beta chain uh, deriving from the genetically corrected cells, uh, there is uh, an amino acid substitution in position 87, allowing to precisely quantify the contribution of uh, the genetically modified cells uh, uh, to the entire production of uh, hemoglobin. 
This said, uh, let me briefly present uh, the results uh, of uh, the two studies. The first one uh, involved uh, 63 patients with uh, transfusion-dependent thalassemia that uh, were followed uh, up to five uh, up to eight years after the infusion of uh, uh, the uh, beta cells. Uh, and uh, you see uh, in this cartoon uh, that uh, the patients initially entered the two-year follow-up uh, studies for them being uh, enrolled uh, into the long-term follow-up. Uh, and the data cutoff uh, is July 22. The primary efficacy outcome uh, was transfusion independence uh, the fine has a weighted average uh, of at least uh, 9 gram per deciliter uh, of uh, hemoglobin without any transfusional support uh, for at least uh, uh, 12 uh, months. And this cartoon clearly demonstrates uh, the efficacy of the approach uh, uh, that was uh, independent uh, of uh, the patient age. Uh, indeed, uh, you can appreciate uh, that uh, the gene addition therapy was successful in adults, adolescents, and also in a pure pediatric population. And the study that uh, we are discussing included uh, both patients enrolled in the phase one and two trials and in the two phase three trials. And uh, remarkably, the success rate uh, in the phase three trial uh, was 90% in comparison to the 68% uh, of uh, the phase one and two trials. And this is due to the optimization or refinement, if you wish, uh, of uh, uh, the cell transduction Indeed, uh, through a refined approach, uh, the percentage uh, of transduced cells uh, and the vector copy number uh, per cells uh, increased significantly in the phase three trials in comparison to the phase one and two one. This uh, cartoon also showed that uh, the efficacy of the approach uh, was independent of uh, uh, the patient genotype uh, in particular, you can appreciate uh, that, that there was a very high success rate uh, in both uh, the non-beta-0, beta-0 patients, namely those patients with the residual endogenous hemoglobin production in the order of uh, uh, 2.53 gram per deciliter, as well as uh, in the beta zero, beta zero population, namely in those patients in which there is a, a virtual absence in the production of uh, hemoglobin. And the data on the beta zero, beta zero population uh, have been published in the New England Journal of Medicine. The safety profile uh, uh, of the approach was consistent uh, with that of an autologous transplant preceded by mild ablation uh, uh, based on the use of busulfan. 12% uh, uh, of patients develop a venoclusive uh, disease of the liver uh, which resolve uh, after uh, appropriate treatment. Uh, and remarkably, in the thalassemia population, uh, no malignancies, insertional uh, oncogenesis, vector-derived uh, RCL uh, or clonal predominance were uh, observed. So overall, uh, these data indicated that uh, BT cell, uh, the gene addition therapy approach is potentially curative uh, in patients with TDT across ages and genotypes through the achievement of uh, transfusion independence with uh, abnormal or near normal hemoglobin levels. Uh, the data obtained in the patients with the longer observation time indicated that uh, the therapeutic benefit is sustained over time. Uh, and. Uh, 
and the two posters, uh, you can appreciate uh, that uh, an exploratory multivariate analysis demonstrated that the percentage uh, of uh, transduced cells was the most predictive factor uh, for transfusion independence. Briefly, the second study refers uh, to the long-term uh, patient-reported outcomes following uh, the gene addition therapy, and uh, uh, it will pre be presented uh, as uh, a poster, and the number is 3665. Uh, in particular, uh, we evaluated uh, the patient-reported quality of life uh, comparing uh, the results that have been obtained before uh, the gene addition therapy and those reported by the patient uh, after the treatment uh, using a generic healthy-related quality of life uh, assessment. As you can observe uh, in these slides, uh, there, uh, there was a positive trend uh, observing patients who achieve uh, transfusion independence for uh, several factors. In particular, 93% of patients were either employed or able to seek employment as compared to a value of only 67% before treatment. Uh, the percentage of uh, uh, absences uh, from school uh, was only 50% as compared to 95% before treatment. 45% of patients no longer require management of disease symptoms, uh, and 81% report that improvement in physical activity. So overall, uh, all the patients uh, reported uh, an overall benefit uh, from uh, uh, the treatment, uh, and uh, these data indicate uh, that uh, the long-term study of the quality of life indicate an improvement uh, despite the relatively high baseline score, uh, and this improvement continues through the three years following treatment. Uh, and uh, it is noteworthy the improvement in the ability to engage in employment, school attendance, physical activities that were recorded. Thank you.